of Gentleman Style Podcast. I'm sorry I played that song a little extra long. That's my new beats that I just downloaded and bought and purchased. And I was just jamming out a little bit too long and just enjoying it for a second. I wanted you to enjoy it with me. I was I was really throwing down here. But welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Gentleman Style Podcast, your host of the number one podcast in America, coming to you live and direct as Ooh, your favorite podcast host in America. I just wanted to say thank you for being a loyal subscriber. I appreciate you tuning in. And I appreciate your time and commitment to the channel. Please, when you have the time, hit the like button. Subscribe to me as we will continue to broadcast and go live with new and interesting topics of your choice, of your choosing that you selected. And so thank you from the bottom of my heart to the crown of my head to the toes of my feet. I appreciate you and I want to say Thank you. So diving right in, as the topic suggests, tonight's topic is a godly gentleman. And what is a godly gentleman? What is the definition of a godly gentleman? I just wanted to point out some key points for for our listening audience, preferably, most importantly, our men, and just uplifting our men because that's what we are here to do. We are here to inspire, encourage, and uplift, and never tear down our men of our communities because these are our future leaders, business owners, and future family builders and, and caterers and, and a f- just caretakers to our our homes in the future and i just want to inspire and encourage and give you the useful tips that have served me and i know they will be a blessing to you so the first um thing is i want you to turn to chapters first corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 through 14 and God's greatest commandment one of God's strongest commandments we must be strong and loving to our homes as leaders and caretakers to our home we must have be strong and affirm in our homes and 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 not demas not in a sense of masculinity or or gender strength but but firm and affirmed in the word of God and standing by our faith and standing by our love and devotion to our families. And so the the first Corinthians chapter 16, 13 verse through 14 um, talks about the strength of a man and what is expected of him. And then the second blessing that talks more on loving and the love of a man and how a man should love in his home is I give you first Peter uh, chapter 3 um, verse 7 and and so a man should always be mindful of his the strength and the 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 resonate the power that he resonates in his home that my my good friend and mentor always used to tell me that a man is the thermostat he's not the thermometer of his home meaning that he is not influenced by external external changes in the home he's the thermostat so he sets the tone for what everything else brings and he sets that that temperature and that pulse that heartbeat of his family and so he should always be coursing through his vein a strong commitment a strong dedication a strong um devotion to his family but also that love and maturity and admiration to his family and his wife as well um and so the second tip is a man of God obeys the word of God. And that chapter comes from Acts 13, uh, verse 22. And that chapter discusses how a man of God is, is stands by the word of God and is a firm believer in his God and is in his God and is unwavering. When's the last time you heard that word? Unwavering. We are unwavering in our commitment to the Lord Almighty, and we we follow Him as we direct the paths in our home. So we follow Him, and our wives and our families follow us. And as long as as long as we are in tune with the Word of God, and we are following His ways. Now, don't get this twisted. Your wife and your family still maintain that pulse, that heartbeat, right? And they're also praying to to God and getting downloads from Him as well. But you lead that charge, and you should always be the example in that home in, in setting the, the, the Bible study night, the, 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 the communal night. A lot of people think, well, I only do communal at church. What about communal at home, right? You can break bread at home. You can sip some wine. I know I got a bottle of wine. Let me stop. 
I know that it, it is not impossible for anything that the, 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 the church that we did in the physical building can't be done at home. So we must always lead the charge in, 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 in our home. And that also means obeying the commandments of God, because where you go, your family will follow. The next chapter, the next topic is, is a, a man has to put childish things away. And that's big. That's really significant, right? That's really big for a lot of men because growing up, we're oftentimes babied and 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 held back um, maturity-wise, and we are not always given the opportunity to fully grow into that man that God has put us on this earth to be. And so this chapter speaks on putting childish things away, and I, I'm just gonna read from the passage here. So we, we can follow along together. And it says here, when I was a child, again, forgive me, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. All right, and I want that to sink sink in a little bit. I'm I'm, I'm being graphical and I'm be adding some extra dramatization here because I want that to sink in. As a man, we must put childish things away. Does that mean you can't play video games? I know grown men that play video games. There's nothing wrong with that. But 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 the overall responsibility should come in first. All right. So let me let me dive a little deeper on that. The responsibility of your home should take priority over video games. And and any man that is leading the charge in his home should always set the tone of his home and lead the example for his children. Right. So if I'm if I'm a man of my household, I'm constantly playing video games. Meanwhile, the house is falling apart. Um, the, the gutters are, are messing up. The yard needs mowing and I'm not handling the responsibilities and the duties of my home. And I'm just playing video games. I am setting the example for my home that it is OK to remain in this state, in this place. And that is not OK. Right. There's, it is it is quite fine to blow off some steam and 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 put the Xbox up or the PlayStation on and blow off some steam and go in your man cave and 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 let loose. Nothing wrong with that. But the but the but your responsibilities should always come before that. And that's why it says put it behind you. It should never be in the forefront, meaning it should never be in front of you. It should never be in the in the beginning of you. It should always be in the past. It should always be in the risk because what's important should be always in your focus or in your peripheral view. And so that's big. And so that's that's our third. Um, that's my third tidbit for you is how a man, a, a godly gentleman must put childish things away. My fourth tip joyfully sacrifice and that comes from ephesians 5 chapter 25 and so joyfully sacrifice a man must be willing and able to sacrifice for the overall benefit of his family and i want to give that some context and i and i don't mean you need to go out kill a deer and slaughter it in your driveway that's not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about is a man has an overall responsibility to make sure that the legacy and the 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 the, there's a vision, right? There's a vision for his household that has that the Lord has downloaded into you and spoken into your household's life. This is the charge. This is the mission. This is where we are going. This is the this is the pathway, the direction that this family is heading, and a man is leading that family to that direction. And so there must be sacrifice. There cannot be any reward without sacrifice. If I want to build a future for tomorrow, there are things that I must, must give up today. And that's big. Now, a lot of people took that in the context of, well, a man is supposed to sacrifice his life for me. He's supposed to die for me. That's part of it, right? If he loves you and, he, and, he, and you love him, there should be no sacrifice big that he wouldn't die for you. The way Jesus died for us on the cross, right? Because we are supposed to mimic him. And so there are no sacrifices too great that a man should not lay down his life 
um, for his family and for his wife. But there are other sacrifices. And those sacrifices are a little bit more habitual. They're a little bit more ingrained in internally versus externally of me just laying down my life. And again, I need to make sacrifices, whether it be financial sacrifices. I need to give up that fancy looking car or, or that sports car that I've always wanted so the, for the benefit of my overall household. Because I can put a little bit more away in this, this 401k for my future, for our future, or, this, or my children's college fund right? That's a sacrifice for some people. That's huge. Hey, um, in my earlier years, I'm eating ramen noodles because I want to um, buy a house. My, my children are getting bigger, and so they can no longer share a room. So I need to sacrifice, and I need to stop eating out all the time, and I need to eat at home, and I need to eat cooked meals at home so that I can save that money and so I can expand that bedroom. That's a sacrifice, my wife has never been to Italy or my, my spouse has never been to France, right? And so I need to sacrifice now so that my family can reap that benefit later. And a lot of people kind of live with the mindset of YOLO, where you only live once. I don't live by that mindset because France, Paris, Dubai are not going anywhere. They're still going to be there tomorrow, right? They're going to be there next year. I promise you they'll be there next year. Now, you may not be. God forbid, but they will be. And so I'm in no rush and I need to plan and sacrifice today if that is the desire of my wife. And we, have, we need to come together and we need to pray together and we need to come together as one unit, as one mind and focus so how we can get there so we can enjoy the fruits of our sacrifices later on, right? It's planting that seed, right? And so enough about that. I'm going to move on. I'm going to keep going because I'll be here all day. Um, the next tip, this is number five, know how to dress for the occasion. Fellas, 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 sagging is dead. Please put some be put a belt on. Please stop um, sagging your pants. That's not cool. That's not hip. That's not, that's not a gentleman, right? That's not how we carry ourselves. A gentleman knows how to dress for the occasion. He knows when to wear a suit, when to dress casual. He knows when to button up the suit, or when a when a a a, 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 a bow tie or or a hand scarf. He can dress for the occasion. If he needs to dress up, if he's going to a gala, or if he's going to a casual luncheon with a friend or family member, then he needs to dress down. Right? Let's not pretend and sit here like. Jordans are the only thing on the shelf. No, let's have some dress shoes in there. Let's have some nice loafers in there. Let's have some very nice um 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 sh um flops in there, right? Some nice slides in there. Let's be able to dress some let's have some nice sneakers in there, right? Right? A man is versed in his in his wardrobe. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, man, my wife got closet is bigger than mine. I would challenge any man that my closet is not going to be too far off from my wife's. And I'm not saying I'm going to take up six closets in a house. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is I can dress for the occasion. I can dress if whether I'm meeting, having dinner with the president, or I can dress and I'm serving my community out in the local community and helping others and, and, and feeding the homeless. I can dress no matter what the occasion. So we need to have a diversity in our wardrobe. If you got 16 jeans and no dress pants, there's something wrong there and you're a little off, right? So we need to diversify our wardrobe. That's a godly gentleman, right? The next thing, the next topic, this is number six, know how to wear a suit. Fellas, fellas, these ladies, they don't care about, about skinny jeans anymore. They're not looking for the ripped jeans anymore. That's 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 that street side. And that's fine if you if you're gonna do that in the comfort of your own home or, or again for the occasion, if it's applicable. But we must have some very nice suits, specifically some tailored suits. A couple nice hemmed up tailored suits with some cufflinks and a nice handkerchief neckerchief, handkerchief, and scarf, you killing it. You are killing it. But we must have some nice suits for the occasion. Every man should have a couple nice suits in his wardrobe, pressed and set and ready to go. All right? So the, the, I'm, I'm not going to beat that horse because I could go on all day. S number seven, have a few basic 
car repair skills. And I'm not talking you need to be able to take the car apart and 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 be able to disassemble it and put it back together. No. A, a man, a gentleman, should have some basic, basic skills. And, and so you should have an idea of how to change a tire. If you don't know how to, you need to learn. You need to go in the back of your trunk, pull out that jackhammer and that spare tire, and do it a few times. And get familiar with it and get comfortable with it. And changing the tire on your cars. You should have some basic knowledge about um, your radiator and putting, making sure it has how to check the fluid in your radiator. Um, changing your oil, right? Not, I'm not telling you to completely disassemble your car and you should know how to tear your car apart. That's not what I'm talking about, right? But some basic general knowledge of a vehicle and the maintenance of it we should have on hand. All right, and so that's where I'm going to lead off with that. I'm going to stop right there, but we should have a basic, uh, basic, basic knowledge of car repair skills. And if you don't know that, if that's something you're unwilling to do, because we all have things that we are unwilling to do and unwilling that we just don't get excited about, we don't enjoy, then you better be able to pay for it. Pause for dramatic effect. And I'm going to leave it there. All right, the next thing that a godly gentleman should have is know how to ask someone out on a date. And how to accept a no. Alright? This is big. This is huge. Right? There are too many men out there just sending dick pics. Right? In the ladies inbox. Don't know her status. Don't know if she's single. Don't know if she's dating. Don't know if she's into voodoo. And you're just in the inbox without a care in the world. And just speaking. I don't know where from. But you're just not, it's not genuine, it's not received well. And you're just completely playing yourself. That's not a godly gentleman. A gentleman knows how to court a lady. A gentleman knows how to speak to a woman, engage a woman, and, and converse with a woman, especially in this day and age. If you don't have a, 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 a grasp of your surroundings or anything that's going on, at a minimum about where you're going or where you're heading or what direction you want for your life, or your family, you are wasting your time. And you need to understand that there is a it is a art form to communication. Communication, I will bet, is the biggest breakdown in any marital relationship. And so as men leading the charge in our home, we must be great communicators. All right. So we and when we communicate effectively. We also must be prepared because we are skilled and crafted with our emotions because we're coming from a place of love that when we receive that note that we accept it and receive it humbly and humbly back off and know when to end the conversation and cut the, the conversation short. If you engage, she's not interested, humbly bow out and leave it there. We must be in control of our emotions at all times. And I get it, right? You can feel very drawn that the, the spirit of lust can set in at any given time. but And we can be drawn to a woman in abundance. But we must be masters of our own emotion and control that passion and control that fire burning within us and burning within our loins to go just all out and just in this lady's inbox, all right? So please, please, please know how to converse and know how to conversate and know how to ask a young lady out. And so effectively, we must be better communicators. OK, the next thing is be good at personal finance. Now, I myself have a background in personal finance, but I always wasn't good at personal finance. And so it took time. It took dedication. It took research. It took commitment for me to develop and work on my financial skills, my financial intelligence. But when I became literate and familiar with personal finance, every it makes you the leader in your home financially. And so you can take charge of your finances and lead your family effectively in a world where increasing inflation rates and new investment products and higher and higher debt to income ratio. Student loan debt is on the rise. We're at a, a, a 40 million, um, 40 million people um, on the unemployment payroll. You have to be versed in finance. You have to have I wouldn't even say basic. You need to have a 
higher level of understanding of your personal finance and an understanding of how to manipulate that and how to navigate finances effectively in order to lead your home. Because a woman can't have faith in you and can't trust you if you can't if she can't trust you with the money. All right. The tenth skill, uh, second to last here, is know how to relate with kids. As we grow older, as we grow wiser, and as our bodies develop and mature, the 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 type of women we're going to meet are higher and higher chances that they are going to have children. And so we must understand and we must reconnect with the children within ourselves and understand that hey, when I was a child, when I was a child, that I liked this. And I, I enjoyed this, and I enjoyed going to the park, and I enjoyed flying a kite, and I enjoyed these things. And so we must be effective in how we relate to someone else's children. We must be effective leaders and examples for these children because they are our future. And gentlemen, last, the last topic I want to talk on here is respect a different point of view. As we go and seek to be better effective communicators, Oftentimes, there'll be times where we're going to be engaging in dialogue, and sometimes people aren't going to always agree with you, and that is okay, but we, one of the things of a godly gentleman is to respect the opinions of others. One thing that has served me well and served me over the course of this year in 2020 is when I disagree with someone, I say my point. And depending on the temperature, the pulse of that conversation, I can either continue the conversation or I can just humbly and effectively bow out of the conversation. When emotions are evolved and tensions are high, typically a conversation isn't going to go anywhere. As men, we must effectively realize that and respect the person's point of view enough to walk away. Sometimes, right? I, when I converse with someone who has a steadfast opinion about something, nine times out of ten, I don't go in with the intention of changing their opinion. I would say ten times out of ten. I don't ever go in with the mindset of, I'm going to change this person's perspective. I go in with friendly dialogue and friendly banter to just communicate and get two points across, across and eventually... One of the two will happen. We'll either come to a mutual standoff where we both agree to disagree, or someone, we will find a, a standalone point where we agree on something and then take it from there and the communication will go further, right? But that is the skill set that must be practiced. It's not going to happen overnight. And it's not going to happen tomorrow. But as we dialogue and as we um, converse and meet new people as we travel and meet interesting and, 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 and more intelligent people than, than us, than myself, we are oftentimes going to be confronted with people who don't think the way we do, don't see the way we do, don't view the world we do. And I met a gentleman who's from Egypt. They have a different mindset when it comes to personal finance. They have a completely different viewpoint when it comes to debt. And I respect that man enough to have a conversation. And we had a great conversation over a glass of wine. But at the end of the day, my, my goal wasn't to influence him. And I could tell through the conversation that his goal wasn't to influence me, but just to share relevant knowledge. And you'd be surprised at what you learn when you shut up and you listen effectively. Because that's all a part of communication, not only just speaking, but listening. And I came out of that conversation feeling fulfilled, feeling enlightened. And if we did more of that when we converse and when we disagree with our fellow brother and our, 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 our brother's keeper, if we did more of that, we would learn together and we would learn so much more. So, gentlemen, that's all the tips I got for you tonight. Please stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And once again, gentlemen, this is your boy, Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, your host of the number one show in America. Stay tuned for next week's episode. And again, take care of your family, take care of your friends, and take care of business. This is Marcus Norman, Gentleman Style Podcast, signing off.